Assalamu alaikum. How are you? How are you doing with this subject? I hope pretty fine. By now I'm sure that you must have understood some of the very important concepts of this subject that is business communication. So I'm very positive that by now you must be sure that what this communication is, especially with reference to business. In his book, Organizational Behavior, Luthans has written a very universal sentence. In his preface, he says that the only certainty is change. I mean, everything is subject to change. Nothing is stagnant still. People are changing. Ideas are changing. Conventions are changing. I mean, the whole culture is also subject to change. There used to be a time when we would co correspond with other people by uh, sending a message through pigeons or it would take a lot lot of time when messages letters and other things would be carried through horses by horsemen and then with the revolution of this steam engine it just become a little uh, easier and quicker so we would get letters, we would get our other messages in a shorter time, in a quicker way. And then telephone came and we could talk. But just four decades ago, almost, I mean a little over or less, the whole world was revolutionized in such a way that all previous convention, all previous concepts changed. This revolution was brought about by modern informational technology. Today, if you want to send any message to anyone though the postal service is very much there but we can send a message in a quicker way we just need to log on to computer write our message and then click it and the message is reached it goes across the globe so the whole life is revolutionized. We have flood of information. The amount and the availability of information has surrounded us from every side. We are encompassed in it, in, in it. So, this has uh, created a lot of problem as well. Nowadays, we need to know how to handle this information technology, especially with reference to workplace. The day has come that even, even for an entry level position, a person need to be literate to this technology. And people at the helm of the affair required it more than anything else. It has changed all the previous convention. This new technology has changed all the previous convention. I mean, not only the means are changed, the way we used to write our written uh, communication are also uh, changed. So, as a result, there are a lot of responsibilities on us. There is a lot of stress over us. 
we have to take care of a lot of things. If we can have speed, if we can have speed, uh, uh, but we also have to think of other things as well. For example, this electronic media uh, give us speed. It also uh, give us whenever we want the, that we can differ time zone. Whenever we don't, uh, we are not concerned about uh, confiden confidentiality. We can use this electronic media. Similarly, we can talk to a dispersed audience personally. So, this informational technology has benefited us in too many ways. But obviously, there are certain problems with that too. For example, our control over content is not very strong. All the information that we have in the in the in this media is subject to subject to uh, be accessible. There are hackers out in the market who can have uh, access to our information. We need to take care of a lot of things when we uh, have to deal with with different media of uh, electronic technology. Today we are going to discuss some of the aspect of this informational technology and its challenges. We are going to discuss that how certain aspect of it work. For example, information technology includes email, electronic mail, it includes fax, though it was there, it came uh, back in 60s or 70s. Similarly, we have group where we have voice mailed, we have, uh, we have video conferences, video tapes, and so on. So, for a student of business communication, this is very important that he should understand all these things, all these aspects of information technology. So, we begin with email, electronic mail. What is email? Email refers to messages sent over computers and includes everything from casual notes to friends to multimedia presentations and access across the world. So, as I just defined, that it refers to messages and these messages can be simply notes to friend. You can talk to your friend, you can send anything to your friends, right? And from these simple messages, you can go on to sending multimedia presentations across the world. So, being su subscriber to any electronic mail, you can have access to use this, uh, this uh, form of uh, information technology. Email, I'm sure that all of you are very much familiar with, but we need to discuss that what constitute this email. What are emails are obviously are composed of or made up of different components. So, what are the components of email? Let's discuss it first. As I just said, as user. So, user is one who uses a computer to send this electronic message. He can send or she can send this electronic message from anywhere, from his or her home, from 
office from any hotel or any place. Now there are a lot of uh, net cafes uh, uh, around the city. So you can use any computer program and send your email, your electronic mail to anyone across the globe. It may be within your city, it may be within your country, it may be within your continent, or it may be to the end of the world. I mean, in no time, just after having written a message, after going through a certain system, you can just push a button of the keyboard and the message goes there within a split of second. Probably there are more technical terms by some uh, people concerned with this subject can tell you the exact timing of it. So, as I told you that this email is made up of different components and the user is one component. So, there are different components of email like user, like messages, like sender and reader addresses, like protocol, like transport, like gateways, like directory, etc. So, all these are different component of email. As I told you, user. Users are often people, but not always. Sometimes they can be other computer application program. So maybe you never know that whom you are talking to or whom you are writing to. Uh, is it a person or some computer application program? So in both the cases, it's, it will be called user. Either it's a person or it's a computer application program. So the first component of email is the user. So if you are having access to computer, you are sending this email, you are the user, right? And the person having your is the user or if it is the program, it is the user. The second thing is message. Message is the actual information that a user sends to another user. So this is the message. Whenever you have some time, for example, you are sending a business email so that your business email is the message. It is like a letter as well as it has its own uh, characteristic that we will be discussing later. So message is the main information that you want to exchange with other person, right? So this is the second component of email. The third component of email is addresses. Addresses of the user, sender and addresses of the receiver. Sender and receiver are the same. It's an information, it's communication. So whenever there is communication, there is a sender, there is a receiver. So similarly, we have an email, it's a message, so it's a communication. So we are sending a message. So this message is being sent by a certain person having a certain address to a certain person or as I just told you to a certain program, application program having a certain address. This address consists of some certain code number that uh, identify the person or the program and then it also carries some service provider and also that tells the type of company that is providing this service. For example, if you find some email address like com, so com refers to commercial. It means that the provider is a commercial organization. It may be any other organization. It may be a governmental organization. So there are different codes for it and these are easily available and written in all books. So you have a certain code and then you have a certain identification number, you have a certain mailbox. So this is your address. So this is the third component of 
email. After this, we have the fourth component that is protocol. Protocol means whenever you want to write any message, you have you are using a system of email that describe the structure of the message. So protocol is uh, basically describe the structure of the message. It has a header of two. So just think of an email. It has a header of two in which you write the address of the person receiving the message. And then it's just like the memo that we just discussed in the last uh, lecture. And then we have uh, from and then we have subject. So this all form up protocol, this all form up and then after the subject we have body. In this body the message is given, we can use any audio, any video, any graphic things into it. So this whole forms of protocol. After protocol we have message transport. The software that moves the message from one system to another is called the transport. Obviously, we are using certain software that uh, transform our message into the other message. So, this uh, is called transport. The sixth component of it is gateway. A gateway that takes one thing from one place to another place. If the message sent from one system must get to a user on another system it must pass through a gateway to be delivered. A gateway is an application program that translates between two protocols of different email system. So it's an application program. What is gateway? It's an application program. So it changes, it transforms the protocol of one system into another. So if you send uh, if you send a, a mass email message from uh, by Yahoo, so it when it is it reaches to any other system, it changes. So so it goes to any other system, and this uh, gateway is the one that changes your protocol from your system to another. The seventh thing is value added networks. Value added networks are your telecommunication system. For example, in Pakistan we have PTCR. This is our VAN, value added network. So, these systems provide us services for giving us access to use this uh, internet and send email for a very minimal fee. So, this is the seventh component that is important to know email. The last one of email is directory system. As a user, you can access directory that contain name, addresses and sometimes other information about each user. So it's just like the directory of telephone in which you know their phone number and other information about any person. Similarly, by using this, you can have information about any other person. So these are the eight components of email. Whenever we uh, send any message, all these components are working simultaneously. So they whole make up our electronic mail. And whenever we are communicating, we don't even think of these things, but we are using all the time. So the next thing is that using email. So you can use email to send your message to individuals, to any groups. From you can send, use one computer to send your message to any other computer across the world. So email can save you time in printing, copying and distributing your message. You can use email to send and receive faxes and telexes. Email is also useful in your personal communication. So email gives you access to a lot of things, even faxes can be sent or instead of using the postal service that, that's always time taking or instead of, uh, instead of making phone calls that are expensive, you can exchange information across the globe 
uh, spending little money and using less time. So email is very useful and using email is quite easy. Next thing to it is the writing convention. Writing convention of email are very different from the conventional correspondence that we do. One of the differences that is very much there is that when we write a letter, we also send some uh, non-verbal cues with it. In case of email, there are not too many non-verbal cues. Beside the convention of uh, email, has an informality in it compared to written communication. It is a little different from the traditional way of writing. In emails, normally certain acronyms are used or it has its own jargon. I cited some of the example in my previous lecture that we use certain terms, certain words which are very known by people using this uh, media. So, it has its own jargon. Then there are certain convention of writings which are, uh, which are strictly observed in conventional writing uh, and which are not taken care of in email. For example, when we are writing, we do not care of punctuation, uh, capitalization, though we do sometimes take care of periods or full stop, but we don't care for other other uh, punctuation mark. Similarly, uh, we can use certain figures, certain uh, graphics to convey our meaning in email, uh, in uh, which, which are not uh, uh, used in normal conventional uh, written messages. So, it this technology has its own convention of writing. Whenever we want to send some email, we need to go log on and then we have to write a certain address and to give a certain password and then we are allowed to use a certain mailbox and then we can compose our messages and send our messages. Similarly, to read email, we have access to any computer system, then to log on by using a certain identification code, our address and password, and then we can read our messages. There are certain advantages of email over the other conventional medium of writing. But before we discuss some advantages and disadvantages of it, so far as the planning of the messages is concerned, we have to take care of planning step when we are dealing with email messages. For example, we need to decide on the purpose that why we are writing our email messages, especially when we are dealing with business messages because we do use the business messages for this purpose. So we need to decide the purpose, we need to decide on the contents and then write the main ideas into point form. Then we can form these uh, point into one regular letter, regular message that is according to our purpose. So planning step is also very important. We should not uh, give less importance to this aspect on electronic uh, mails or uh, when we are sending message through this medium that uh, it also take uh, we must keep this in fact in our mind that it also uh, goes through the same writing process that we have discussed and obviously when we are uh, we are taking care of the planning steps we must keep in our mind the organizational plans that we discuss and uh, we'll be discussing it later on too uh, that we must think that what type of the message is it? Is it a favorable to the reader or unfavorable to the reader? Is it some good news or it's uh, or our message is persuasive one, right? So we need to 
I look at all those aspects of uh, written communication which we t which we uh, look for when we are when we are uh, uh, dealing with other uh, written communication but it has some uh, its own differences because here we want speed here we are not concerned about confidentiality here we are not very much concerned about uh, audience we are not uh, um, we are we, we are not that concerned toward this aspect because we are writing these messages to so many people. So, in this regard, we need to take care of the planning steps. So, after having gone through all these things, now we should also consider some advantages of email, electronic medium, and also some disadvantages of this medium for example email is faster and more efficient channel than regular mail sometime to refer to as snail mail so you just look at this that after the development of this change in this medium the older one is called a snail mail i mean going at a very slow pace and this has become very fast obviously it is very fast nobody can deny this fact that it's not fast it's faster it's efficient and it's quicker it can take you anywhere into the world but obviously if faster quicker it must be having some problem too so it can be difficult to distinguish between casual and formal messages so when something is done with the speed uh, this post haste obviously it will lack some level of formality so that's what it is with this uh, medium that it has less formal level in it and uh, its layout is smaller layout which is a very important thing it is smaller another advantage of this is that it can be sent to different receiver at the same time so uh, you can send an email to a lot of people at time and you can just compose one message and just push your uh, push the keyboard with the your with your finger and it goes to the whole world i mean you can send one single message to a lot of people so it's uh, it's uh, it's time saving and obviously it's a uh, money saving too but this system is inaccessible to those who are computer illiterate are not online if it were the same traditional method the same traditional system so if you were sleeping the postman would knock at your door or it would give the message to somebody else the letter would be given to somebody else but in this case you only have access your own code to the system and unless you log on you cannot have and if you are not computer literate you do not know how to operate this whole system there are people out there who do not know so any message sent to them is just useless right so this is one of its disadvantage that uh, the receiver receiver sometime is not present so in the in this case sometime they are own uh, uh, on model of communication lacks its one component that is receiver receiver but however it's not always the case most of the time we are waiting who is sending us what and uh, from where etc another advantage of uh, this email is that it can be stored and sent at off peak telephone rates it means that we can store any email sent to us and uh, we can send email off peak telephone rates it saves us a lot of finances so just think of this aspect being an employee of an organization that it saves 
the uh, a lot of uh, finances for any organization cost of uh, sending messages you can use this medium its content may be appear later in a variety of printed forms i mean there is the chance of an access from the outside so maybe you have uh, kept one message and it may be picked up by any means so this is one disadvantage of uh, this system another thing that is very important and the biggest advantage of uh, this system is it saves paper this has brought about paperless revolution i mean paperless revolution this is this 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 has been a buzzword around 70 and 80 that now in organizations the amount of paper used is less than it used to be in the past i mean less than to a great extent that's why we call it a paperless revolution so uh, now you you just think that you go to any uh, organization and see any uh, any person uh, any uh, any person there and you will see that there is a computer on the table but no paper very few pa- paper so that's why we call it a paperless revolution it has uh, as i just said uh, it has saved us from storing all those paper that that were rarely used for any future reference that big files file covers etc etc et now we use very little uh, very few papers for for uh, writing purpose most of the time we uh, compose our messages on the screen in word processing and other program and whenever we need we can use it it has one disadvantage and that is it lacks non verbal communication cues to add meaning when we were discussing non verbal communication that how important essential is non verbal communication we trust more on non verbal communication than on verbal communication so as i told you earlier that it lacks this aspect of communication that a message is sent and the message has no non verbal communication to give us an idea about the sender of the message and the the viewpoint of the sender the the, the, the we cannot picture that sender i mean it is difficult to make a, a make a, a mind meeting with the uh with the re- receiver or the sender of a message being sender or being a receiver so it lacks non verbal cues this is one big advantage of this system another advantage of uh, this email system is that a message can be written and edited quickly by several people before it, it is sent so this is the greatest uh, advantage you can simply write message you you can you can use any spell checker you can use any grammar uh, checker it can tell you where uh, the it can tell you if the structure of the sentence is not good it can uh, give you give you certain suggestion for improving your sentences and you can you can edit your letter in a lot of may, way they it gives you the a facility to proofread your messages properly so this is a very big advantage uh, that this system has given you but it its disadvantage is it can be overuse overuse means sometimes you become too much conscious i mean uh, when you are doing uh, doing uh, your job you sometimes you you have a race against time and in that case uh, this can be this system can be very helpful to you because it's very speedy you can send your messages in a, in a post haste but when you get used to it you know that you have access to everything and you can improve upon what you have written so you start using it again and again so in this way this becomes a disadvantage so these are the few advantages and disadvantages of e mail but when we are writing emails 
we also need to put some element of good online writing style. I mean, we have to think of these messages the way we are thinking about our other messages like memos, like letters. And here, we also need to discuss all those principles of writing that we discuss there. So, we should think of clarity if we want to communicate clearly. So, whenever you have this purpose in your mind and that purpose is that you want to uh, want to communicate clearly. So, you think of clarity and to think of clarity, you need to think of the simple word, conversational word, you need to think of small sentences, you need to think of a small paragraph, not more than three, four sentences in them and you focus on your subject, your purpose, all those things that we discussed when we were discussing the principle of clarity. So, always think of clarity when you are dealing with your electronic mail. So, clarity is also as important for your online messages as it is for your conventional messages. Then we have the other thing that is readability. Make your messages readable by giving accessible information to your reader. Similarly, move any ambiguity into your message. Use vivid definite language, the concreteness that we discussed earlier. Normally, punctuation in email messages is not taken care of. But punctuation is very important because sometimes it can hamper the meaning of a sentence. The structure of the sentence does not give its meaning to the reader. So, always take care of this aspect that whether your messages are clear, they have the proper punctuation that is required to understand the messages. So, these were different aspects about email, electronic mail, what it is composed of, what are its component, how we should use it and uh, what, are, uh, what, is, what are its planning uh, uh, steps, what, what important it is and uh, what are its advantages and disadvantages. As I told you that electronic media includes a lot of other things, right? So, after email, we have uh, another electronic medium and that is fax. And we all know that we were familiar with fax earlier than we were familiar with uh, email. So, fax or facsimile, this is, this is a sort of system in which we can send our messages from one place to another place. So, what happened in a fax? A machine scans a printed page, converts it to a signal and transmit the signal over a telephone line to a receiving fax machine. All the faxes have been available for many years but they were very slow and very expensive. And there was another problem with the uh, fax machine was this that only we could send a fax of uh, from one machine to another of the similar uh, similar type. So, this was a problem. But fax was there and uh, in the absence of this internet and this email medium, we have been using fax to transmit information. This is the oldest electronic means of communication. Today, fax machine do not require the same kind of machine at the receiving and they can transmit a page in less than one minute. The newest fax machine use digital transmission which makes it possible to use a computer program as a receiver. These new faxes are also much faster. So, we can use these new fax machine and we can send one message in a minute and besides sending one message in a minute, uh, we can send message or uh, fax message from one machine to any other machine of any other type. So, this is the another electronic medium. After faxes, we have voicemail. Voicemail saves messages on a 
computer disk and this message can be retrieved later on. For example, you give a call to somebody and this and and the telephone of the person is is switched off and after two three bells a certain program starts running and you receive a, a call, uh, you receive a, a voice which tells you to record your message for that very person and you are given given some other uh, instruction so this process all forms up voice mail voice mail is a very uh, uh, is very popular nowadays and uh, it's very effective medium of uh, communicating though it's not as effective as any other oral message face to face meeting or any oral message through a, any telephone but it has its own advantages and it saves you from the tag of a telephone i mean you don't need to carry a telephone all the time your telephone is maybe switched on and after a number of certain bells this program is activated so it has certain advantages for example it replaces short memos and phone calls that needs no response so in a business context this can be very helpful when you want to send some message to somebody and you do not need any feedback instant feedback instead of writing a memo you simply call the person and the person is not available and you just give the message and this is recorded so it replaces short memos and phone calls similarly it is most effective for short and ambiguous messages i mean short and ambiguous messages instead of writing messages you can talk there are certain instances in your working uh, life in which bringing your message into a proper form takes time so instead of doing this if you talk to uh, the person who's obviously around you it's better so this uh, this way through uh, by uh, in which you send your message is more effective and can give a vent to your feelings whatever you have about something so it also solves time zone difficulties it mean that you want to send talk to a person if somewhere in another continent where there is this uh, where the time zone differs so the person is not available you have just drop your message and the message is retrieved later on so this is very useful in this regard reduces a substantial amount of inter office paperwork and uh, it's a powerful tool when you need to communicate your emotion and tone sometime you want to communicate a message and this message carries some of your emotion and maybe while ta talking to a person face to face or or uh, uh, through telephone you may be unable to hold your emotion but in this way you can express anything you like so it's especially useful for goodwill and other positive message so this uh, voicemail is obviously very effective and can be very helpful in our very busy life beside this voicemail we have other communication technologies such as groupware groupware allows several people to use software at the same time to create documents to keep track of projects and manage deadline it enables a supervisor to manage workflow via individual computer instead of physically being present at the workplace or different places so this can be helpful like face to face meetings so group work is also very helpful and is a very powerful medium of this technology then we have cd rom cd rom compact disk read only memory has been available for several of year and is becoming more popular it's a powerful tool for putting masses of information into it so you can just imagine that uh, you can uh, save 
a message of uh, over 1000 uh, 100000 word into one small C, uh, cd and uh, you can convey any longer message into it this can be very helpful beside this we have teleconferences it's a rapidly developing technology that will eventually change the uh, way companies do business so it's the best for informational meeting ineffective for negotiation obviously when we are doing teleconferences we cannot exchange feedback the way we do it in a meeting it's an alternative to face to face meeting it discourages secondary conversation which is a problem in a meeting in a meeting sometimes we go into other topic so it saves us from this secondary conversation it helps participant focus on a topic but prevent participant from sharing valuable information i mean that we can only talk about certain topics so it does not let us deviate from one purpose or one topic similarly we have video tape video tape can be very helpful if we want to convey some message we can just re record any message and this video tape can carry it uh, it's helpful that it also carries our image to the uh, listener to the viewer so this medium is also very helpful sometime we do want to uh, we, we uh, communicate through this way when we are detached from our from our uh, audience but it can be very helpful so this uh, video this uh, uh, program of ours like uh, the way we are doing it's also one way of it instead of a video tape uh, you will be having a cd so similarly we have another form and that is computer conferencing computer conferencing allows user to meet and collaborate in real time while viewing and sharing uh, documents electronically it offers democracy because more attention is focused on ideas than on who communicate them but overemphasizing a message can threaten corporate culture which needs a richer medium so computer conferencing can be very helpful we can focus on different ideas so we have discussed certain media of uh, this uh, electronic technology and these uh, are very helpful but remember that when you are dealing with them you have to consider your receiver that's very important think of his viewpoint his experience his knowledge needs position in the company cultural differences and technology and uh, think about yourself that have you presented a clear purpose statement a logical order of information an appropriate concise and complete message a clear readable writing style positive language paragraphs focus on the ideas a courteous and confident tone carefully edited work etc and the last word to it think of that have you met the readers need to understand the information the documents purpose the writers need to convey particular information so these were some uh, guidelines for online messages all the messages that we have just discussed so today we have discussed electronic technology and uh, electronic media we have discussed email we have discussed faxes we have discussed voicemail we have discussed Uh, groupware and so on these are very useful channels to communicate and these can be effective for a businessman when they are prudently uh, used i'm sure that these things will be of uh, help to you and you must have an idea of uh, the uh, this technology and uh, how it works because you also need to communicate through all these media and this is important that you make yourself acquainted with all the these things now inshallah in the next lectures we'll discuss some real issues of communication aspects of communication different types of correspondence letters all uh, inquiry letters 
uh, reports and other uh, forms of uh, oral and written communication. So there we are finished with the topic. So let me say you, Khuda Hafiz, we shall meet again. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.